welcome to the Backyard Machine Shop. Today we're working on the Pratt & Whitney lathe again, specifically on the tailstock. And what we're going to do on the tailstock, we're going to make a new quill. And, um, and the reason we're doing that is the original quill for the Pratt & Whitney, while in good shape, has a number 10 Jarno taper. And Jarno tapers are kind of uncommon and finding tooling, um, you know, for them to use chucks and drill bits and things like that, it, it's kind of hard. So we're going to make a new one out of uh, four and, and put a number four Morse taper in it. Excuse me. Okay, now one of the things I had to look for is the type of material to use. Well, I got done investigating a little bit, looking at the part and the old quill, and I've come to the conclusion it was made out of cast iron. And, and there's several reasons that I thought that. One is, if you look here in the, um, in the quill, you can see where it was casted and there's some sand, where some sand was left in the casting and, um, and created a little divot. Now, I would, you could say that might be rust, but if you look anywhere else in the casting, that's the only place it is in that one area. Next thing I did is I did a spark test on it. The spark test, showed it was cast iron. And the next thing is I used the file and checked the hardness and it's not hardened. So we're going to make a new quill out of cast iron. And what we have here is we have a 2 and 3 eighths inch rod and this is what we're going to make it out of. It's just standard gray cast iron and uh, now we're going to make our new quill out of that. Uh, talk about the tapers a little bit. Now here's a number 10 Jarno taper and um, here's a number 4 Morse taper. Now they're pretty close to size, and I'll take you over to the board and I'll show you the difference. So hold on one second. All right, guys, when we're looking at the tapers, and here's our comparison. On the number four Morse taper, the large diameter is one inch 231 thousandths in diameter. On number 10 Jarno, it's one inch 250 thousandths. That's only 20 thousandths difference, and you'll see they'll look like they'll work, but they won't, and here's the reason why. On our small diameter, we're at one inch and forty-four thousandths, and one inch even on the jarn. Okay, and, and then on the Morse taper, that gives you a point zero five one nine four per inch uh, taper, and on the jarno, you have sixty thousandths taper. Now, the jarno is a simple taper, and doing the research, I found out a couple of things, and and get these numbers. All you have to do is you take the number ten and the large diameter would be 10 over 8. So you use 8's and uh, so you, your number 10 will be 10 over 8 and it'll give you an inch and a quarter. Alright, so if you do a number 7 Jarno, which I have a number 7 Jarno over here and we can check it if we needed to, but a number 7 Jarno would give you 7 8's or point eight seven five okay really simple small end is instead of eights you use tenths so on a number 10 it's 10 over 10 or one inch okay on a number seven it would be seven over ten or point seven hundred really simple taper sixty thousandths a foot uh, inch and, and it's, it's easily made. All right, so let's go back over and look at the tapers. Okay, so here we go. Here we are. We got what, what I have here is I have a number uh, seven Morse taper sleeve that goes in my Kingston lathe, and it has a, it's an adapter for a number four. And then we have the number 10 Jarno and a number four Morse taper. So if you look, the number four Morse taper will actually go in to the uh, to the Jarno and, and fit quite. I don't want to set it, so it'll quit, it'll fit really nice in there. Okay, uh, but in that taper, if you remember, this is going at, at sixty thousandths per inch, and the other one's at fifty-one thousandths per inch. So what happens at the bottom? You have clearance. Now. Uh, if you go the opposite way, your number four fits in, okay, nice and snug. And again, I don't want to set it, so 
but when you try to set your number 10 or your number 10 Jarno in there, if you look, it seats in the middle or in the bottom, but doesn't seat out here. So that's the difference in the two takers. They're, they're very slight and um, let's see, nine, you know, eight thousandths per per inch. So really not a whole lot there, but it, it does make a difference in as far as is uh, using them. Now you probably could get by with using the number four in there, but if you ever get some heavy work, more than likely it'll uh, it'll it'll spin on you, or you'll end up wearing your taper out in one spot. Uh, the quill it's going to be pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We're going we're going to take and cut us a piece of material, and we're going to line we're going to bore it or cut it or drill it all the way through. Uh, cut Morse taper on one end. And then on this end, it's got a bronze uh, nut that's pressed in, and we've got our nut. Um, I can't remember where I ordered the nut from, but I think it was like 20 bucks. And it's a nice, a nice, it's left-handed, eight threads per inch. It's a nice fit. There's no play. So, so let's uh, let's get going on it. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take you over to the saw, and we're gonna cut the uh, the material to length. Okay guys, we're over at the Marble Hacksaw and I'm going to show you we can cut the material and um, pretty much got enough material to make two of them if I make a mistake. So, again, Marble Hacksaw. I got you over here to lathe. Uh, we got the stock in the lathe. We've um, we've indicated it in as best we could with this rough stock. We're gonna face off the ends and uh, center drill, flip it over, face off, center drill, and then we'll put it between centers and we'll rough turn it. So uh, let me get the lathe set up here. That should be about right.
Got the uh, we got the rod and we just got it mounted, indicated in this end and put this in in the center. And I'm gonna turn this. Uh, the part's actually gonna be one inch, nine hundred ninety-nine thousandths and nine hundred ninety-nine and a half thousandths. So we're gonna rough turn this down to two inch, one hundred. And that's gonna do a couple things. One, it'll get us ready to uh, to to make the part. We cut our tapers in and stuff like that. Give us a good good round surface. And we can also check our tail stock. See how much run out we have in our tail stock. So let's uh, let's get at it. <laughs> So what we're going to do is about 65, go ahead and dial it on in for about 100, let's try 8 inch.
we have two inches, 760. Eighty nine and six tenths. Two inches. Wow, way off. All right, we have two inches, seven fifty. Two inches, seven fifty seven. All right, guys, so what we've done is, um, let's clean some of this mess up. I made a few, a few passes here and, um, Got my tail stock in alignment within a few tenths, and uh, and I'm still going to leave plenty of meat on it for a finish, and that we can make another adjustment if we need to. Okay. All right, so. Right now we're at like two inches, two, uh, two inches, two twenty-five, and we want to go to. I'm gonna go somewhere around two inches, one hundred. So we're gonna take it all right here in this path. Somebody, I'm back out. There we go. Let's take another hundred. And if need to, we can take the 25 and make another adjustment. But I think we've got it right now. 